said, bless the wonderful name of Jesus. He is wonderful, marvelous. He's holy. He's righteous. We've come to celebrate the name of Jesus. Isn't that right? This is the day that is confirmed. And Jesus did what he said he was going to do. He got up. He got up. He rose from the grave. Just like he said he would. You want to know why we call it Resurrection Sunday? Because he got up from the grave. Buddha didn't get up. Muhammad, he didn't get up. But Jesus Christ rose from the grave. We serve a wonderful, wonderful God. A day of celebration to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. As the choir was singing, they couldn't help but think of a scripture. In the book of Psalms, Psalm 24, it says, lift up your heads, O you gates, and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory, and the King of glory, and the King of glory, the one that sits on the throne, that King, the King of glory, guess what he was going to do? And the King of glory shall come in. Lord, we want you in the sanctuary today. Who is this King of glory? You ask, the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Don't mess with God. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. We come to celebrate Jesus Christ today. We're just so glad and so thankful for all that God has done. This is a day that we go back and remember that God, not only did he raise himself up from the grave, but he resurrected you and he resurrected me from the sin, the, 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 y'all work with me today because I'm excited. From sin and from shame because the devil had you bound. But Jesus broke the chains. Isn't God great? See, I normally say he's good, but isn't God great? What? A mighty God, we serve the God that would deliver you from your sin. Because some of us, we had a lot of sin. Some of us were professional sinners. Some of us had rank. Some of us were sergeants, captains, and generals. It took a little more resurrection power for you. But God did it for you, and he did it for me. And I'm so glad that Jesus, Jesus has the power to set you free. Resurrection Sunday, the day that people call Easter. But sometimes when you say Easter a lot, you forget what he's done and you think about eggs and bunnies. But we're not talking about eggs and bunnies. We're talking about the Lord. Jesus Christ who died on the cross got up he didn't stay in the grave
pray. Oh, we in the midst of a good time today. I came to praise him. I came to lift him up. You got to lift him up all by yourself. Lift him up. You got to glorify him all by yourself. Lift him up. God has been so good to us. Sometimes we just got to talk about and remind, be reminded of God's goodness. Brought us here safely. Protected us on the highways and the byways. And if you had any thought about it, we see what happened in Baltimore. Those people were just driving to their destinations. Didn't expect for that tragedy to happen. But God brought us here safely. The highways and the byways were intact. And he brought us to his sanctuary one more time. So we're glad about it. Looking forward to a wonderful day. We do want to welcome our YouTube audience and we thank God for you that are listening online. And we do want to acknowledge our visitors. If we have any visitors, would you please stand today? We do want to acknowledge our visitors, our loved ones, our family, all of those that come out to support their loved ones today. Thank God for you, and we're glad that you came, those that have come in to support their loved ones and be with their loved ones from out of town. We do thank God for you, and we pray that God would give you traveling mercy back to your destination. And I do want to thank God for uh, our Friday celebration. We had a wonderful time this Friday night. God met us here. He blessed us in a special way, and the, the speakers, the presenters of the Word of God were excellent. And we got something from every one of those speakers, and we are so thankful for God blessing us in a special way in the manner that He did, and we give our God all the glory, isn't that right? We give Him all the glory. We give Him all the honor for things going in the manner that they did, and we are looking forward and be praying for our youth. They are prepared, they're ready to come forth with their speeches today, and y'all support them, all right? When they come up, give them love. Let them know they're supported. They've been practicing, training, working on it, getting their speeches together because they want to represent and glorify God themselves. And they are taking this very serious. Y'all see, they're taking it serious. They're not playing with this. This is serious to them because they want to glorify God themselves. So we thank God for all that he's doing, all that he's gonna do, and in the midst of this service that God would bless each and every one of you in a special way and that you would not leave here the way that you came. And may you hear something that will glorify God in your life, that will strengthen you and make you a better Christian a better man, a better woman, a better child for God's glory. God bless you as we now go continue on in our service today. We will have our morning scripture reading immediately following that, our morning prayer. And please be praying for those that are in the hospital, those who have come out of the hospital in recovery. Pray for those who have lost loved ones and ask that God will console their hearts and give them strength and we are praying for those that are still in the hospital and have the desire to be here, but unfortunately they cannot keep those people in your prayers. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, church. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at the 11th verse throughout the 22nd verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 11 reads, Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Now if Christ be preached, that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there were no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, 
And we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain once again. You are yet in your sins if Christ has not risen. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. No hope if Christ is not risen. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Verse 20, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards they that are Christ at his coming. May God bless the readers and the doers of his word. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, thank you, Father, for this blessed day that you bestowed upon us, Father. For, Father, this truly is a day that we've never seen before. And, Father, we want to thank you. Father, if I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't thank you enough, Father, for your darling son, Jesus, that you sent from heaven to this world, Father, that he may die and sacrifice so that our sins could be forgiven and that we could have a relationship with you. Thank you, Lord, for that precious blood that was shed on Calvary's Hill, for the resurrection of my sins, Father. I thank you for all that you've done. I thank you all for what you're doing, Father, and for that which you have not done yet. Thank you for that magnifying King of kings and to the Lord of lords. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for all that you've done for me, for a wretched sinner like myself. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for this day forth, Father, for all that you've done. And if you do nothing else, Father, you've already done enough. I thank you, Lord, for continuing to lift me up in spite of these trials and these tribulations. Thank you, Father, for continuing to comfort me, Father, during these death times that we face. Father, I know as long as my hand's in your hands, Father, I shall not fear. For yea, though I may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. I thank you, Father, if I had a thousand times, I couldn't thank you enough. Thank you, Father, for never leaving me, nor forsaking me. Thank you, Father, for never putting more on me than I'm able to bear. This I pray to the Lord of Lords and to the King of Kings, my Lord, my Savior, in his name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. As you know, here in our ways of giving, the ushers no longer take up the offering. We would like to acknowledge our ways of giving. In addition to the offering boxes that's on the wall in the back of the sanctuary, we also have a slide here that we're going to show you on the ways of giving. May God continue to bless you. And now we would turn this over now to our youth choir, amen, or to our youth. The wonderful youth.
being raised in the church. Of course I go to Sunday school, sing in the choir, go to Bible study, and I say four hours after service has ended. <laughs> I'm being raised in the church. Of course I know I respond when somebody said God is good. I'm being raised in the church. Of course I know and believe John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I'm being raised in a church. Of course I read my Bible and have a real relationship with Jesus. I'm being raised in a church. Of course no all things work together for my good because I love Jesus. I'm being raised in the church. Of course I wear my Sunday's best every Sunday. I'm being raised in the church. Of course I have fun at the Easter celebration egg hunt yesterday. I'm being raised in the church. Of course I know the Easter bunny and Easter eggs have nothing to do with what Jesus did for us on the cross. We're being raised in a church. Of course we have Easter speeches. said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. First Peter, chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy, we should be born again to the resurrection <coughs> of Jesus Christ from Amen. the dead. Roman 8, 11, of the Spirit of him, who raised Jesus from the dead, telling <laughs> you he will raise Christ. Jesus from the dead. Jesus from the dead. From the dead. Okay. 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 Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection in the life who ever lives in me, though he died yet. So shall he live in everyone who lives and believe in me, shall never die. Do you believe this? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, the order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk with the newness of life. Eight thirty-four. Who then is one? Say that. Who then is one? Who could man? Who could then? No one. No one. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Who died? Who died? More than that. More than that. He was raised to life. He was raised to life. Is at the right hand. Is in the right hand. Of God. Of God. And also for us. Say for us. 
for us. Okay. Come on, Kaden. Come on. I want to know Christ. And I know Christ. Yes, to know the power. Not to know Christ. Of his resurrection. And I want to know what. Okay. Amen. Okay. Come on. Hold it. Hold it. Oh, jeez. Kelly, Kelly, where are you at, Kelly? Okay. Say John 19. John 19. When he had received the drink. See the drink. Jesus said. Jesus said. It is finished. It is finished. Okay. All right. All right. Come on, Maya. Come on. Come on, Maya. Maya, Maya. Okay, Maya. Here we go. Where you at, Maya? Here we go. Say Acts. Acts. Say Acts. Acts 3. Say Acts. Acts. God raised him. Say God raised him. Because he is dead. From the dead. Dead dead. We are witness. Of this. Okay, good job. Go over there. All right, come on. Uh, hold, hold it. All right, girls, come on. Y'all right here. Turn around. All right. Come on, right here. All righty. Here we go. Come on, Zion and Kelly. He is risen. Death could not hold him down. Death could not hold him down. Rejoice in the resurrection. Rejoice in the resurrection. Of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Now here, say Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Okay. Good morning. Let's get on our feet and give our children a round of applause. They did an awesome job. Amen. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. All right. Not all of our youth um, worship through song and speeches. Um, our very own little sister, Jemiah Hill, she, um, show, she worships God through her art. So on the back of your program, you will have some of her pieces. So keep those, because that's her signature. and She's going to be famous one day. But if you look up on the screen, you'll see some of her artwork. Let's give her a round of applause as well. Thank you. Now our youth are going to come to sing a song for you.
Harry Little Ones, come on, come on over. We're gonna sing a song, remember? Let's go, let's go. <laughs> there you go. He saved me, he raised me, he set me free, and through his grace I have victory. He has done so much for me, I'm in love with Jesus Christ. I'm in love with Jesus Christ. Free and through his grace I have 
morning, church. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Um, I just want to say a little something before we sing this song. Um, I was on social media, and uh, I saw this lady from this church. She said she's not going to uh, say the word resurrection, or she's not going to say the blood. And I'm like, how you, how you going to say something like that? And that's what Jesus, he, he died mm-hmm. on a Friday. He laid in the grave for three days, and he rose again. She didn't want to offend anybody. How can you be offended? That is the word of God. That's why you have to read the Bible for yourself and have an intimate relationship with him. And trust in God. today that when you don't trust in God you're going to have all kinds of problems but when I gave 
gave my life to Christ. This is what I did.
Now we not, we not rushing that. Cause it's fire shut up in your bone anyway. Praise him, glorify and magnify him. We so excited and we want to make sure we do things proper and we ain't leaving nobody out. And we want to make sure that we take these fruit moments to allow this space for our youth. speeches, so we're going to give her space to say her speech that she worked so hard on. And if you could keep that microphone at the podium there for us, Sister Tamara, we have one more thing we want to do before we present the word of God. We want to uh, allow space uh, for Minister Walker. Would you please come? He's got a poem that he would like to present to the church Amen. applicable for this Sunday. So we thank God for him as he comes. And then we immediately following the poem, we will present to your hearing the word of God. So there was a, a story I once heard told. It was this tour group going through a museum. And as this tour group went through the museum, the tour guide um, stopped at every painting and told the tour group what that painting meant. And they came across one painting and it was called Checkmate, and it was the devil playing chess with a man. And the devil was smiling because he had the, the man's king and checkmate, and the, he right, knew that he right. won his soul. Uh -huh. And so the tour group moves on, and um, in that tour group was an international chess champion. Uh -huh. And he stayed behind, and he played this game of chess, mm -hmm. move by move, in his mind. And at some point, he came to a revelation, and this revelation caused him to sprint down the hallway, screaming and yelling, stop. Hold on, we must call the artist immediately. The painting is wrong. Right. The king still has I one more move. move. And I'm so glad this morning that on that cross all those years ago, when the devil thought he called checkmate on my Lord, right. and he buried him in that tomb, right. that my king still had one more move. So the poem that I'm gonna share with you this morning is called My King. My King, my king was born king. The Bible says he's a seven way king. He's the king of the Jews, that's a racial king. He's the king of Israel, that's a national king. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven and he's the king of glory. He's the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. Now that's my king. Well, I wonder, oh, I wonder, do you know him? Do you know him? Now don't try to mislead me. Do you know my king? David said the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. My king, he's the only one whom there is no means of measure that could define his limitless love. No far-seeing telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of his shoreless supply. No barriers can hinder him from pouring out his blessings. Well, well, he's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. That's my king. Well, He's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the supreme problem in higher criticism. He's a fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's a cardinal necessity of spiritual religion. I wonder, oh, I wonder, do you know him? He's the miracle of the age. He's a superlative of everything good that you choose to call him. He's the only one, and I said he's the only one who could supply all our needs simultaneously. He supplies strength for 
the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He's God Almighty who guides and keeps all his people. He heals the sick. He cleanses the leopard. He discharges the debtor. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent and he beautifies the meek. Well, my king is the key of knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. He's the captain of the conquerors. He's the head of the heroes. He's the leader of the mighty. He's, he's, that's my king. His office is manifold. His promise is sure. His light is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace, oh y'all didn't hear me in here, his grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. I wish, oh I wish I could describe him to you, but he's indescribable. He's indescribable. I'm coming to tell you that the heavens of heaven couldn't contain him, let alone some man try to explain him. Well, you can't get him off of your mind and you can't get him out of your hands and you can't outlive him, but you can't live without him. Yay, Lord. That's my king. That's my king. I'm so, the, 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 the Pharisees, they couldn't stand him, but I'm so glad they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him, and those witnesses, all those old witnesses, couldn't get their testimonies to agree about him. Herod couldn't kill him, death couldn't handle him, and that grave, that mean old stank old nasty old grave, it couldn't hold him. Yay, Lord, that's my king, that's my king. He always has been, and he always will be. I'm talking about the fact that he had no predecessor, and he'll have no successor. There was nobody before him and there'll be no one after him. You can't impeach him and he's not gonna resign. That's my king. Just in case you thought, we not playing church. We not playing church, we for real about this. We love him for real. We love Jesus for real. Thank God for Minister Walker as we truly have been blessed so far, we have been abundantly blessed. God has blessed us in a special, special way. You have asked the Lord to heal your heart. You've asked him for strength in those hours that you have talked to the Lord. And if you were listening, God was answering prayer today. But he's not finished yet. We still have the most important part of the service. Out of all that we've enjoyed, and we value above, among it all, the word of God has the highest, highest thought in our hearts. And let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come to you today because we, we love you. We have heard what you have done. There are others that know what you have done. And there are others who want to know and have an understanding of what you have done. We're praying that your Holy Spirit rule, reign, and abide. Do what you do. You convict hearts, you edify, you build up your people, you comfort in times of need. But bless your word today that it may come forth with power, that it may come forth with clarity, and that it may fall on good ground 
in the hearts of your people. And as it falls on that ground, O oh gracious Lord, break it up. Happen to be good ground. That fruit may grow on that particular ground, fruit that glorifies and fruit that magnifies you. We come to you because we believe that you hear our prayer. And we thank you for what you have done and what you are about to do. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we give you thanks. Amen. 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 Do want to speak to your hearing today. We've had a wonderful time of, of praise, worship, celebration. We've had exciting moments from our youth and they have blessed our hearts. We got soloists, you know, it just was, it just was awesome. And uh, then we heard the kids singing and it, it just, it's overwhelming, you know, but we know that God is in the building and we are so thankful where two or more are gathered together in his name, he is there in the midst of us. So the question is, did you bring Jesus with you? Right. <laughs> brought him with me. Right. Me, too. me too. Hopefully you brought him with you. That's right. Because when you come together in his name, he's there. Mm -hmm. And we want to help people today to realize who Christ is, the days Sermon title is Christ, the Great One Who Served. Christ, the Great One Who Served. We've talked about the cross. We've talked about him getting up from the cross. We have talked about his promise, but we want to talk about God's kingdom. Because a lot of us have allowed the world to dictate how or what is considered greatness. But Jesus had a whole different paradigm of what greatness really is. Because if you start, and I like to say this because I remember when I was in kindergarten, they always tried to make you the best. Who's the best out of the best? They didn't teach you how to love your classmate or your fellow worker or your friend to be as good as you are. But Jesus had a whole different paradigm of what greatness is. Is greatness is not about the amount of money that you got. What kind of car you drive doesn't make you great. You may have an E class, you may have a, a, a 700 series BMW, that doesn't make you great. You may have a Tesla, doesn't make you great. They all can break down in a minute. And then you know what becomes great the bill to repair it becomes great. Let's be clear, Jesus' birth, his death, his resurrection was no accident. It was ordained by God. Born to serve. Born to serve. Serving means giving. To serve means that you are yielding to another man or woman and saying, can I help you? When you go to a restaurant, they call the waiters a servant. And if you're not getting good service, you ready to leave. Service, we're talking about serving. We're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ and how he paid the price with his life. Gave it all. Didn't leave anything. When you serve, what do you leave on the table? Do you give it all or do you hold a little bit back? We're talking about serving and what's great in God's kingdom. Matthew chapter 20, verse 24 through verse 28 give us, gives us a great illustration of what service really is. And Jesus took the time to explain to his disciples, some say apostles, but he took the time to explain to them what greatness really is. Mm -hmm. Verse 24, if you would please stand for the reading of the word of God in Matthew chapter 20, we will read verses 24 through verse 28 to your hearing and Amen. then present to you the sermon for today. And it reads as thus, and when the ten heard it, 
They were moved with indignation against the two brethren. But Jesus called them unto him or himself and said, you know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them and they who are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Greek word servant. And whosoever will be chief among you, making it personal, let him be your servant, even as the Son of Man came not, came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and in and to give his life a ransom for many. You may be seated if you can. He gave his life as a ransom. What is a ransom? You all have watched the movies where people call, they kidnap folks' loved ones, and they say, we're not letting them go until you pay us a ransom. Isn't that right? You, that, that's the principle behind it. But this is different because Jesus gave himself to pay a price that the song said he did not owe. He didn't owe your price for your sin, but he was willing to give it. Let's look at this conversation. What's got the 10 all upset and mad and, and, and the Bible uses the word indignation? What are they so upset about, irritated? What's going on? What are they fired up about? And if you know the story back up, and Salome, the mother of James and John, came to Jesus and asked Jesus that if John and James could sit on her right hand and on her left, Give them a special spot in your kingdom, but they didn't understand God's kingdom and how Jesus Christ works. They didn't understand kingdom rules. So Jesus took this as an opportunity to explain to them kingdom rules. First of all, it ain't mine to sit on their right and they left. That's the first thing you got to know. And then as they are talking, the other 10 looking at the two, wondering, what are they talking about? They beat Jesus. They beat me to Jesus. They got this. They got the opportunity to talk to Jesus before I did. And they want to know, what did Jesus say about them getting a spot? So they got to Jesus first because all of them were probably thinking, I should have beat them there. Y'all with me? Amen. They wanted a place in God's kingdom and the other 10 are mad because they think James and John got what they asked for. But Jesus has something for them. Verse 24, and this does apply to all of, all of us. No service is greater than the service to redeem sinners. He redeemed sinners. No service is greater. And when the ten heard it, heard what Salome asked, they heard the request. They were moved with indignation. They wanted the position themselves. We have to be careful. When we think other people got better footing than us, that we, we, we don't become jealous a move with indignation and we quit serving. We could quit doing because of what we perceive of somebody got a better spot than us. Now we have to understand that promotion, the Bible said promotion does not come from man. It does not come from the east. He's helping me here. It doesn't come from the east. There are men on the east. It doesn't come from the West. There are men on the West. It doesn't come from the North. We got men up North. It doesn't come from the South. We got men down there too. Promotion coming from the Lord. Now if the Lord chooses to promote somebody, you might want to get out of God's way. Because you don't know what they've been serving, what they've been doing behind the scenes. You don't know because they're not jumping out front trying to, be, uh, uh, trying to be somebody that they're not so that they can get the praise of men. They're doing the work behind the scenes. God has said, I can trust them. You have been, you have been faithful in small things. I will make you ruler over many things. So God is working. God is doing things. But these 
particular two, and their mom felt like if I can come in and just beat them to the punch, I can get what I'm looking for. But Jesus had a whole different evaluation. I don't care who came first. I don't care who came second. I don't care if your mom came and talked to me. It's about what God says is going to happen. It's not mine to give. They were mad, moved, all out of, discombobulated. Can't think right no more because they mad because they think, man, John, J James and John, they're going to be sitting next to Christ and they're going to be ruling in the kingdom. They still got the mentality of this, Jesus Christ overruling Roman authority. They had that mindset. We want to be kings, queens, jacks. Oh, we're not talking about spades. <laughs> And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation. They were mad. They, they were bound up with frustration and anger against the two brothers. If you had any doubt, if they weren't upset, the Bible wouldn't have said the word against. Against. When you get upset with somebody or you think they got something that you want, you become against them. Y'all mind if I walk through this a little bit? Can I walk through, can I walk through this a little bit? Because we're trying, to, we, we're trying to be better, right? We want to be better people. We want to be better Christians. We want to be better husbands. We want to be better wives. We want to be better fathers. We want to be better mothers. We want to be better grandparents. Here's a way for you to be better. The expectation is for people to serve us. We got to drop it. You don't love me if you don't serve me. Well, let's beat each other out serving. I mean, I just serve so much that we just beat each other. I served you more. I, I'm going to serve you more. I'm going to do more for you. Why don't we just serve each other like that? You don't hear people say, let me out serve you. That's right. That's right. Let me get that. They will move with indignation against the two brothers. And that's why you have to be careful that when it comes to being parents, you can't have no favorite child. If you got one or you got ten, you can't have no favorite. Because if you got a favorite, well, one, you ain't got no other. If you got two or ten, if you got two or ten, you can't have no favorite because they're going to ask you. They're going to test you. I'm your favorite, right? I know I'm your favorite. And you like, no, I got no, I got four other kids. I got spread this love. I got five other kids. I got spread the love. I got one other child. I got spread the love. I love you both the same. Well, I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> but we try to show people that we're loving them. We 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 spreading the love out equally. We're loving everybody. And even when we love everybody, everybody's not gonna receive that love. That's right. They're not gonna receive it. But it doesn't mean that you stop serving. It doesn't mean that you stop loving because people don't receive it because your blessing comes from God. Amen. God sees it. Isn't that enough? God, right, 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 for God, for when did God seeing and blessing us become not enough? And we expect so much from people. We expect it for people to pat us on the back and we don't get it. We get disappointed. You didn't appreciate me. God appreciates you. Isn't that enough? He's the one with the rewards that when you see him face to face, he's going to give you a crown of righteousness. I don't want your crown more than I want his. You shouldn't want somebody else's crown more than his. Become men pleasers. And the Bible says you got your reward. You got your pat on the back. So don't expect nothing from God. Y'all give me a few more minutes here. Christ, the great one who served. Right here, James and John. Mad at James and John. Some people gonna be mad at you. Why pastor got them teaching? Why pastor letting them do Sunday school? Why pastor letting them do this? Why, why they this, this, this? Because they asked. Amen. Go ahead. Right. Can I teach? Can I do this? Yes, yes. You got the gifts. Let's sit down. Let's talk about it. You got the gift of teaching. You can present. Let's, let's go. We're going to delegate. 
and we're going to be there to help you and support you in those moments. You didn't ask. I can't, do any, uh, I can't read minds. So don't think that the pastor or any other teacher or any other leader, the Sunday school superintendent, don't come to Deacon Thomas and say, hey, why am I teaching and you ain't told him you want to teach? Don't get mad at him for that. That don't, that, we're not doing that. Be clear, be, make it clear, make it clear, concise what your desires and what your gifts are so that they can be used. We want willing workers. We looking. Hey, oh. back here preaching, y'all. We want workers for the glory of God. And we see God is doing, God is working. We need people here to love and teach these kids how to sing properly and teach them about the word of God and walk with them in times that are difficulty and hug them when they need hugs and clap for them when they need to be encouraged. That's what we're looking for. They're not getting that if we're not here, right? Don't just drop your kids off. Come with them. Find out, who, who's, find out who's teaching your kids. Find out what your kids are being taught. Check on it. See if it's right. Pray for the people that are dealing with your kids. You know they need prayer. Right. <laughs> you just drop these kids off and didn't even leave a prayer with them. I'll be back. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They come back and they tell you your kids was bad. You be like, my kid? No. Yeah, your kid. <laughs> your kid. My kid. And we got to talk to them, get them right. Know that, teach them how to do things properly. Verse 25 says, but Jesus called them all. Called them. Come on over here, 12. Two and a 10. The two that thought they had an inside scoop and the 10 that thought they were on the outside. Called them all together. Let's meet. Let's talk about this. He called them unto himself and said, y'all spirit's not right. You're mistaken my kingdom. You know, here's what's going on in your mind. You visualize the Gentile kingdoms and how that work. You know that the princes of the Gentile, Gentile exercise dominion over them. They dominate them. They've got leaders that dominate you, and some of y'all got bosses that dominate you every morning. Every time you go to work, they prove to you that they the boss. That's right. I'm your boss. I, you don't need That's to tell right. me. I know you my boss. It's right on the door. Right. It says such and such, boss of everybody. Right. It says it right on your door. Right. Right. Boss of everybody. Mr. Such and such. Right. Mrs. Such and such. Boss of everybody. We got it. We, got it. Right. we know it. You don't have to dominate me. That's right. The Gentiles, they, they, they demonstrate power and try to suppress you. They dominate you. They exercise dominion over them. And they who are great exercise authority upon them. Worldly greatness. When people believe that they are great in the world, you're going to know about it. You are going to know about it. It's clear that they think that they are better than you. That's right. Come on, preach this now. Come on, preach it. Mm. It's clear. You go to talking to them, you can't get two words in. They go to talking, you still can't get two words in. Because all their thoughts are you not enough to talk to me. What can you when what can you give me when you less than me? I can't receive anything from you because you're less than me. But God can use anybody in here. God can use anybody from the cradle to the grave to give you a word of edifying, a hug, a smile to build you up. But you, you don't want to miss that because you think you're too much. Can't be that way. We can't. That's the way the Gentiles do things. You can have a great idea in your company. Go to the president of company and he said, go back. I don't, you're not even a vice president. I don't want to hear anything from you. Only the vice presidents have access to me. 
It's not like that with Christ. It's not like that. Everybody got access. The veil was torn. Remind you got access. You don't have to go through a priest. Right. You can pray to the Lord yourself if you've got a relationship with him. Take your burdens to him. The Lord, the Lord says, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. you got to know Jesus. Jesus, once you begin to learn him, you know when you pray and get that to him, he will take it. If you learn of him, he will take that burden from you. He is a heavy load sharer, a burden bearer. Talk to the Lord, and if you really know him and you're dealing with something, you can take it to the Lord, and he will lift you up and encourage you. That's why he says, learn of me. Learn of me that that's how I am. That's who I am. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I'm meek and lowly in heart. Look at, look at that, lowly in heart. And he talks about finding, and finding rest, not just rest that you can sleep eight hours, but rest unto your souls, the inner man, the inner woman, deep down inside. So when the Bible says he will give you peace, that passeth understanding. You understand that. Because you learned of him. And when everybody else is in a, they all twisted up and can't handle what they're going through, you got peace. And they don't understand why you have peace because you gave the burden to the Lord. You have given, you've laid that yoke upon him because you have learned if you have learned through your relationship and learning more about Jesus that he really will take it. Yes, he, will. Yes, he, will. he will take the difficulties that you're dealing with and he will walk with you. You got to know him like that. You have to know him like that. He breaking down. Let's, let's get off of this mentality of the world system. You have been corrupted in thought because of the world's system. But it shall not, it shall not be so among you. None of us in here should be fighting over position. Make it plain. Nobody in here should be fighting over position, jealous, man, because you ain't doing it. It's okay. God ordains, right? If we really believe God, we should not be fighting over anything you are doing or what you're not doing. Because sometimes God opens doors, but sometimes he closes them too. It shouldn't be that way with you. Don't be jealous of other people. You haven't been through what they've been through. You didn't go through God's scholastic spiritual class to go through what they've been through. You haven't been through the trials. You haven't been through the surgeries, the pain. You ain't dealt with what they've dealt with. As God shaped these men and women to be in the positions that they're in. That's God's work. That's God's business. We want to tell God how to do things so bad. It's like your child coming and you saying, no, we're not. No, we're going on vacation. No, we're not. We're doing this. No, we're not. We're eating this tonight. No, we're not. That, that stuff is backwards. But that's how we do God all the time. The Lord says right here, he's telling, them, he's telling the apostles, the disciples, this is not how it's going to be. And some people can read this over and over and over and over again and they still want to use the world system in their lives. And then come back when God don't bless and get mad at God. They flip it on God. But his word is never going to change. His word is going to remain the same. And if you really want to be blessed by God, it shall not be so among you. Don't aspire to be, don't aspire worldly greatness. But whosoever will be great among you in God's kingdom, where God rules, 
Man wants to rule, but you push God out the way and you do things opposite to the way that God wants you to do it and God gets out the way. And we see it over and over and over again. Big execs, they come, they make money and they, they, they buy companies and they lay people off and they make more money. At the expense of those people who have lost families and they sleep real good at night after they've done it. They added more billions and more billions and they got more money. And then after they see that the decisions that they made cost them money, then they go and ask for what? They want a handout from the government. That's right, that's right. Bell out. Give us a bailout. Help us. Give us more money. And guess what the government has done? Give them more money. Give them more money. Help them out. The world takes care of its own. Not so. With us, we don't aspire to be like that to where we got so many billions we don't know what to do with. You can't count them after they get all the way up to a certain number. It's too many zeros. And they still want to add more and more and more. And then the Lord, at his time, calls for their souls. But whosoever would be great among you, let him be your minister. There's not no title. That don't mean because you, it ain't, that ain't what that's about. Now that you got the title of minister, you've been ordained, that's, that's not what he's talking about. Let him be your preacher. No, this is not the text. The Greek word is servant. If you really want to be great in God's kingdom, learn how to serve. Learn how to serve. Learn how to practice how to serve doing something for God's kingdom and for somebody else. That's right, that's right, that's right. They were shocked by it. What is this? No, this ain't what we used to. This, he's turned it upside down. Everybody was looking for stuff and rank and, and how can they can get the good word? How can they use? They want to gain status. But God turned Christ, turned it upside down. Not so in my kingdom. If you really want to work, learn how to serve. Kings didn't go around serving folk back in those days. Kings were served. Now, this king, who is the king of kings, is looking to serve. Be your minister. If you really want to be great, any of you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn how to serve. Give to somebody else. Become a servant. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Give yourself to the Lord. And whosoever will be chief, okay, you want to be a high-ranking chief? Number one, baby. You want to be up there? Okay, all right, okay. All of y'all want to be big shots. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. How, how can you be number one in serving everybody? Jesus is giving them a paradigm of the kingdom of God and not the kingdom of this world. You really want to be chief. You really want to be elevated in God's eyes. Serve other people and serve God. Be obedient to the Lord. For if you love me, you will keep my what? Commandments. You'll do what I say do because you demonstrate that you love me, but I first love you. Verse 28. Even as the son of man. Now here's the example. Jesus wasn't just talking. He walked the walk. You got a lot of people that's real good at talking. When it's time to do it, you can't call them no more. I changed my mind. No, that's too much. But you said it. Let your yay be what? Yay. And let your nay be nay. You can't do it. Tell me you can't do it. That's right. That's right. And we respect that. And we all respect that. If you can do it, don't say you can do it and then you pull out. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered to. Here's the example he's giving them. Mm -hmm. Here it is. But to minister. This is radical to them. And to give his life a ransom for many. You mean to tell me the Messiah, the anointed one, the one that we have waited for, the one that we have been looking for, the one that we anticipated would deliver us from Roman rule is going to die? You mean to tell me you're, we, we, we can't put our minds around this? 
We expected for you to come rule, reign, and take authority down here and get your people, bring back the Jewish people back into the place that we ought to be with you. But this is a radical thought that you came to die? They knew exactly what ransom meant. That means to buy something back that's enslaved or under the authority of somebody else. So Jesus came to be a ransom for us to buy us back out of the hands of Satan because he's the only perfect lamb that can pay the price of sin, death, and shame because the devil had our souls because of the fall and he did not want to let go. And for some, he doesn't want to let go today with the keys right in your hands because he's got the keys. He's got the keys to death and hell. He can free you today. The same Jesus who gave his life a ransom on the cross. He died on the cross so that our sins, so our souls would not be lost. Our sins would be washed away and we could be made new won't you receive him today? Amen. The one that was a king decided to become a servant even though he knew he was a king was willing to serve. Jesus knew who he was and if you had any doubt he told them that I am. And they picked up stones to kill him for blasphemy. The Jews was like what are you saying? You're God? Yes I am God. The word, the word of God. Go with me to the book of James, John chapter 1. We'll read a few verses to your hearing and we're going to get out the way. I want to tell you who this Jesus Christ is in a little more detail. Understanding John chapter 1, Jesus paid the ultimate price. He served others. He gave his life. He gave his life. John 1 says, in the beginning was the word. Jesus was there at the beginning. He's the word. He was there. If you had any doubt that Jesus is God, here's your text right here. People have issues with that. But Jesus is God. In the beginning was the word. John is trying to break down to you who he really is. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Here, this chapter allows you to learn who Jesus is. He was the word and the word was with God. Okay, the word was there. First of all, he's in the beginning. He's with God. The word was God. Okay, I'm getting a little more light on who he is. The same was in the beginning with God. The only one that's in the beginning is God and he's there in the beginning before everything was created, before any creature, any angels, anything was created, he was there. All things were made what? By him. Jesus made it all, and without him was not anything made that was made. He was a king. He's God. But he chose to come out of his eternal spirit, come down and take on a body of flesh, take it on and bear the sin of the cross for us. Servant, this is God. God chose to demonstrate how much he loves us. If you have any doubt that God loves you, he's showing it right here. Don't have any doubt. Don't allow the devil to deceive you that you're not loved. You're not going to amount to anything. For God, this man preaching with me today. I'm going right over to John 3.16, and he's right with me there. And this is the text we're going to end it with today, and you've heard it so many times. For God so loved the world. If you have any doubt that he loved you, that he gave service, Servant, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that includes anybody who believes, got to believe in him, in Jesus Christ, you will not perish, but you have everlasting life. When uh, the Passover came, they told them to put the blood over the post and the death angel will pass over. That particular letter was the last letter of the alphabet. It was Tav. And the Tav letter of the Hebrew alphabet came and it looked like a cross. 
representing and moving and pointing towards the true Passover lamb. After all of those lambs, those ram he goats that they sacrificed, they would say it was so much blood from all the sacrifices that the priests had made for all the sins of the people. The blood was so heavy it flowed into a water flow that they mixed together and flowed out away from the temple. And then we see Jesus on the cross when they came and put the spear in his side. What flowed out? Blood and water. The real, true Passover lamb to take away the sins of the world is Jesus Christ. He served. He came to serve. He was born to serve. He gave his life as a ransom so that we would have life in that eternal if you want an example of service, Christ, he is the great one who serve. God bless you and God keep you. The doors of the church are open as the deacons come. We know that people have come out to support their loved ones, their mothers, their fathers, their cousins, their sisters, their brothers. But we want to focus on Jesus Christ today. You may have come to show them your love and appreciation, but now the doors of the church are open. You may have heard from Jesus Christ today, the Holy Spirit, and you have decided to give your life to Jesus today. want to be delivered from sin. You want to be set free. You want to know about this power to serve that we're talking about. And the only one that can give you that is Jesus Christ. If you don't know him in a pardon of your sin, won't you come today? Don't worry about anybody else looking at you. It's not about them. It's about you and God. If you are hearing the Holy Spirit, talking to you saying that you need to give your life to him while you have life give your life to him do it today don't wait because tomorrow is not promised to you you can give your life to him today and if you already know Jesus Christ and you're looking for a church home a church that you want to be a part of and come and fellowship and be a part of this work. Why don't you come today? Come and be a part of this work. Be affiliated with a church that loves Christ and loves his word. And we love one another. Why don't you come? And if you are someone that needs to be restored and put back in right standing with God, and you want us to pray with you and pray for you, why don't you come today? Be restored, be renewed, be brought back in right standing with God. You want to repent and get things right so that God will hear your prayer when you talk to him. The invitation has been presented. These have come. But we want you to know there's plenty of room in God's kingdom. You may be seated. You serve. serve a mighty God. We love you, Lord, more than anything. And we will now hear from our church clerk for what reason these two have come.
on her Christian experience. Amen. Kind of overwhelmed this morning. I just thank Jesus. Left a church that I had been at for 30 years. But when Take the Lord time. tells you to move, yes. you yes. got to move. You don't worry about what everybody else thinks going on. You don't do all that. You just move. And that's what me and him did. I had visited here before. And I kept telling him, I don't think we got to go that far. Like, I don't think we got to go looking here and looking there. But I had to wait on my husband because that's he right. is the head yes. of my household. So I've been coming, been enjoying Sunday school, and I just fell in love with y'all. That is just that simple. Y'all are very welcoming. Y'all y'all let me be me. So I'm going to continue to be me. I sing in the choir. I work with the kids. I'm here to do some work for the Lord. That's all I can tell you. We also have her husband, who is Deacon Daryl Hunt. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. First, give a reverence to God who was the head of my home and pastor one God bless you. Amen. Bless you. Amen. A lot of people know me, and there's some people that wish they didn't know me. <laughs> but uh, I used to be something else. Y'all be all y'all. No, you don't, you don't understand. <laughs> but okay, uh, <laughs> God is good because He He saved me. Time from prison rides and everything else, and I'm still here. Yeah. But I have one thing to say, and then I'm gonna I'm go. I, I had surgery on the 23rd of January. Now, I put it off as long as I could, because they was giving me pill after pill. I told them, man, I'm tired of taking pills. If you do something about this problem, well, I'm gonna let God do what he do. Mm. So, they finally did it, so they got me in the mask, and I'm, the, the doctor came up, and I'm steady patting his hand, and, and, and he's doing this here, but he don't know I'm praying for these hands. Mm. You know, he, he, think, he, he actually thinks I'm thanking him, which I am, but I'm asking God to bless these hands. Mm. You know, and, and I came out five and a half some hours later. You know, I'm still a little bit sore, but you know, God's still good. Standing. God's good. All the time. All the time bro. So I do. I do know that the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Yes, sir. So here we are. Amen. Amen. We just want to, if you can give the mic back to your wife first, we initially talked to Sister James Etta. God, like you said, has brought you here today. And as you said through your testimony with the church clerk, that says that you are a Christian. You come as a Christian. You believe that Jesus Christ has died. He's rose from the grave. You believe on the third day. You believe this. And your faith remains. Have you been baptized? Yes. You have been baptized. We thank God for that. Based upon your faith that you have testified to us and the faith that remains, we welcome you to People's Community Christian Church. You are a member. You got all the, you got all the rights and privileges of every other member in this church. Welcome here to People's Community Christian. We welcome you. And then we got Brother Darrell, her husband, and she said something very powerful about how she was being pulled by the Lord, but she waited on her husband. That's order, and God respects that, and he blesses that. And so that's a great example that you provided, and based on the information that you have given to our church clerk, you are a Christian as well. Amen. You believe that Jesus Christ, he, he came, died, and he rose again. You believe that? Absolutely. You have been baptized. Yes, I have. Twice. Amen. <laughs> twice. I'm sure the first one didn't take. <laughs> <laughs> so we thank, we thank God. We thank God for you, Brother Darrell. And it's just, it's just amazing that it's wonderful to see families come together, husband and wife. We thank God. And based on your confession, of faith and your faith that remains that Jesus Christ is God. He's the Lord of all. Based on that confession, we welcome you to this household. Believers, you have all the rights and privileges 
of every member in this church. We welcome you. We welcome you. Now, before we come down and give him the right hand of fellowship, I want to say something else very briefly here. He said he used to be. Isn't that right? We got a whole bunch of used to be's in here, don't we? Yeah, I used to be, you used to be. But we thank God for your testimony as we come to give him the right hand of fellowship. Has it been a good day? Yes, it has. And we want to thank God for everybody that has come. And I see my brother back there, Minister Woods. We acknowledge you. We see you back there. And we see Evangelist Woods back there, too, raising our hand. We thank God for you guys. And let us stand for the benediction. We want to give God thanks for our choir. We want to thank God for all of the musicians, all of the soloists. Thank God for all the youth who had the courage to come up and do their speeches. And all of those that work with them, you are to be commended for the wonderful work that we saw today. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you. Forgive us for those times where we looked to be served and didn't serve others. We didn't follow your example. We didn't follow your lead. But we really do want to be more like you. It's not about us. It's about you. So we receive your instruction. We receive the way that your kingdom calls for greatness. Help us where we need help. Strengthen us. Life screams out that it's all about us. It's not all about us. It's about you. So strengthen us, your people. Please, dear Lord, take us to our destination safely and bring us back to your house at your appointed time. For your glory and for your honor, we ask you these things as we thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for your death, the burial, and the resurrection, and thank you for being who you said you were and doing what you said you were going to do. And because of that, we have life, and we have it abundantly because of you, your sacrifice, the propitiation for sin. We thank you for paying the price. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we ask you these things. And let every heart say with me. Oh.